All right, today's lesson is section 1.4 from the book. We are going to talk about measure and classify angles, okay? So again, with vocabulary, it's very important that we know the definitions. Um, <clears throat> an angle is simply two different rays that have the same initial point. If I draw a picture of what that looks like, here's the point. Here's my initial point. Here's a ray. Let's see my initial point is T. And here's the ray. Okay? And there's some point on each of those rays. Let's see that's A. And this can be B. Okay, so that's an angle. How we name an angle, there's three different way, ways we do that, right? First we write this little notation. Looks like a, I don't know, a carrot or a nose. And we use the three letters in the order that they are A, P, B, or angle, B, P, A, where the initial point is in the center, okay? You can name it like that, or you can just say angle P. But make sure you have that angle marked down, okay? It's really important. Um, the size of the angle or what makes up the ray. Remember, we start with that initial point goes first, so B, P, B, I probably shouldn't use P, or um, the ray P, A. Those are the rays that make up that angle. From the vertex is the initial point which is point P. And congruent angles have the same measure. Like, let's just say angle A is congruent to angle B. Again, if you need more time to copy down the definitions, just pause the video right now, and you can just go right ahead and take your time. Okay, here are some more definitions. An acute angle measures greater than zero, but less than 90. None of the angles are going to have a negative measure, so but just keep that in the back of your mind. Um, a right angle measures exactly 90 degrees. An obtuse angle is greater than 90, but less than 180. And a straight line, or straight angle, measures exactly 180 degrees. Um, angle bisector. If I have an angle bisector, like look at this little angle I have down here. Here it is, my angle. An angle bisector is a ray that bisects the angle. So if this was, if the whole thing was 50 degrees, so that whole angle is 50 degrees, that means each little angle that it bisects would be 25 and 25. Like that, an angle bisects. It divides into two congruent angles, equal. Okay, that is important. All right, there is a protractor postulate. So, um, just like it says, it, this is a wordy definition that I got out of the book. If, um, Consider a point A on one side of ray OB. The ray formed by OA can be matched one to one with a real number from 100 degrees to 80 degrees. That means somewhere in here we can measure this angle with our fancy protractor. <coughs> Excuse me. Which is the reason why I gave you all a fancy protractor. So you're going to need it for the next, for this bottom portion of the page, right? We're going to measure all these angles. And I'm going to do my best with my vertical protractor. But uh, it's not very easy to do. Okay, the really important part about how to use a protractor is, do you see the initial point here? I want to line up the crosshairs at the bottom of my protractor with that initial point as best I can. It's very hard to do with this like one slight little movement. Okay, it's pretty much lined up. Now, there is a baseline here that lines to zero degrees. I want to make sure that that line lines up with that one ray down here. So I'm going to rotate this so it gets in line with that zero. And then take note of the two sets of numbers here. That is just if this was an obtuse angle, which this is obtuse. It's bigger than 90 degrees. We're going to use the larger set of numbers. And depending on which direction your angles are going, um, that's why there's two sets. Like maybe like 
I'll look at this one down here, it's facing the other way. So we're gonna use the smaller numbers on this side. Okay, so this is an obtuse angle. I'm gonna use the big uh, number here. So it's a little bit past 140. So I would say it would be about 140, 43 degrees, about. This next angle here to the right, this is an acute angle. It is less than 90. I'm going to do my best to try to drag my protractor over and measure. Remember, I want this vertex or the initial point to line up with this crosshairs in on my protractor as best I can. It's about right. And then this this bottom ray here, I need that to line up with the zero. So i got to turn this bad boy, but there we go. Once that's lined up, about approximately, notice it's acute, so we're not going to use the obtuse angles, we'll use the smaller angles, so this measures pretty much exactly 50 degrees, maybe a little bit over, again, we might be off by one or two, but we should be in the ballpark of how to measure with the protractor. So I would say this is about 50 degrees. Okay? Now we're going to come down here and measure this little guy. I'm going to bring my protractor down, make sure that, that this lines up with my little section right here as best I can. Now, because this one's facing the other way, I always make sure I line up that bottom. Oh, my goodness, I can get it. I can get it. Okay. Yeah, okay. I'm trying my best. Um, I'm going to line up that bottom ray with the zero on this side of the protractor. Oh, look, it even gives me the measure. It says 16 degrees. Ooh, so sweet. Oh, my gosh. So it's definitely acute. I don't know if you guys notice that it says 16 degrees. So I don't even know if I'm going to go back and make sure I was right. All right. And we got this bad boy over here. I'm not sure. It looks like it could be right, but let's make sure. Let's line up that initial point with the crosshairs at the bottom of our protractor. And let's rotate so we're on zero. Well, um, it's definitely not zero degrees. That's weird. I don't know what happened there. Huh. Oh, maybe because I got to rotate it that way. The protractor wants to go that way. Oh, that's kind of strange, but... I don't know if you guys notice this or not, but I'm I'm lining up that ray with the zero, and I'm getting a, a measure of 90 degrees. So this is a right. This is a right angle. Go ahead and put that little box in here because it measures exactly 90 degrees. Um, I don't think we need a protractor for this angle at the bottom because this is a straight angle. And it measures exactly 180 degrees. But just a little, you know, fun activity, right? Measuring with a protractor is a good time. Oh, you guys have fun? I'm just kidding. All right. Well, hopefully you were practicing and you were able to get those measures as well. Now let's look at another fun postulate we have here, okay? Angle addition postulate. So when we're trying to match an angle, we use the letters to guide us. So it's like R, S, T. R, S, T is this angle here. I guess I'm just going to give a little angle mark here. This is R, S, T. Uh, like, well, however you can trace it with your finger, that's the angle, okay? Um, oh, I think it's pretty much to me. Oh, my God. R, S, T. That's the whole thing, okay? It's telling us that if I take the measure of the littler angles that are there and add them together, like R, S, P, plus P, S, T is equal to the whole thing, right? It's, like, it's almost like that segment addition, right? We can add the two little angles here. I can add this angle plus this angle and get the whole thing. And just to note, this M, we measure. 
I'm looking for a number. I usually use a weird accent like the measure because my old geometry teacher told me funny and she'd say, what's the measure? So I like to remember her and say it like that from time to time. All right, so now we're going to give in that the measure of angle LKN is 145 degrees. Right, you place it on finger or pencil, L, K, N. The whole thing is 145 degrees. We need to find the measures of the two angles, the two smaller angles that are inside. So if I know I'm going to use angle addition postulate, I'm going to be able to set up an equation. 2x plus 10, right? That's my LM, LKM plus NKN, which is 4x minus 3. All of that is equal to 145. Oh, what happened? Wacky. Okay, so I'm going to combine my terms. That gives me 6x. Combine my terms. It gives me positive 7. I have 145. Subtract 7. 6x is equal to 138, I believe. I'm going to have to bust out my little calculator. Divide by 6. And I think most of you are good with solving equations. We get x equals 23. The problem is we need to plug it in. Exclamation point. Okay. I'm going to plug in 23 for x. 2 times 23 plus 10. Well, 2 times 23 is 46, plus 10 is 56, so this is 56 degrees. Then I'm going to plug in 23 here. 4 times 23 minus 3. Oh, why did I write 25? I don't know. Four times 23 is 92 minus 3 is 89 degrees. Let's just double check that 56 plus 89 gets us that 45. I mean 145, and it does. Okay, so now we found the measure. So the, the measure of angle LKM is 56 degrees. And the measure of angle M A N is 89 degrees. Excellent. We found it. All right, so now remember the vocabulary, it's really important. When you see that this ray bisects it, that means these two angles are congruent. They're equal to each other. So set the two equal to one another and solve for X. So I'm just using inverse operations, you know, solving equations one-on-one. -on -one. You guys should be good at that. Um, okay, we divide by negative 4. We get x is equal to 10. All right, I need to find a measure of a, b, c. A, B, C. I want the whole thing. So I can plug in 10 here. 6 times 10 plus 15 is 60 plus 15, which is 75 degrees. I should get 75 degrees for the other one as well. So 10 times 10. Sorry about my 10. Minus 25. Well, 10 times 10 is 100. Minus 25 is also 75 degrees. Okay. So 75 times 2 is 150 degrees. So the measure of angle ABC is equal to 150 degrees. Oh my goodness, I do not know why. There we go. That doesn't look so bad. Okay, so make sure you make sure you plug it in. If you plug it into one and you know that it bisects, so it's equal on both sides, you just multiply by two and then you're good to go. All right, so here's your assignment for today. Make sure you get it done, get it into me, however you can. Ask questions if you need to.
Bye.